Hello there folks and welcome to another Socket Sanctuary episode. Have you ever wondered what kind of new CPU and motherboard combo you can get for around the $50 price point? Finding something good used? Not a problem. Finding something new for that price? A bit more of a challenge. This is the solution I came up with. For the miserly price of $55, this all-in-one CPU motherboard combo can be yours. By the way, this is not a sponsored video. I purchased this myself. I can be as hard on it as I want, and what you are getting is the unmitigated truth as I see it. So this is the ASRock J3355B ITX. What a name. This combo comes with the newish Apollo Lake J3355 Dual Celery processor with a 2 GHz base clock and a 2.5 GHz burst frequency. After setting the BIOS to the performance mode, the CPU set comfortably at a 2.4 GHz most of the time. In addition, the board is passively cooled so it is completely silent. The board requires 204 pin laptop RAM and supports up to 1866 DDR3. As far as graphics go, you can use the integrated graphics on the CPU, which are honestly pretty bad. You do however get a PCIe 2.0 16x slot for graphics adapters. So for the testing, we are going to use a decent GPU for it to make sure that the bottleneck lies with the CPU. So the GPU we used was the Radeon HD 7950 with 3 gigabytes of GDDR3 and 1792 graphics card next stream processors at 850 megahertz. This card should be more than adequate for any game we throw at it. After the hardware was decided, I threw it together and started her up. For daily usage, the system could be considered subpar at best. Doing mundane and simple things like opening Google Chrome or unzipping files takes a measurable amount of time. I would consider the time it takes to be about on par with the 12-year-old Athlon 64 X2 4800 Plus that is clocked at 2.4 GHz. To prove this claim, I ran the Celeron in Cinebench R15. After about 10 minutes, it finally finished the test with a blisteringly slow score of 99, which is about twice the speed of the single core Athlon 64 that is clocked at a similar 2.4 GHz. Add another core and you'd match the Celeron's performance. So then, the IPC is about on par or thereabouts to a 12 year old processor according to that test. If I were any more disappointed in it, I would be digging a hole in the backyard to bury this board in. But that was just one test. Let's see if it will get any better in gaming situations. When testing the games, I tested them both at low and high settings, and also recorded the average and max CPU usage to give you folks an idea of how hard the CPU is stressed in these particular gaming tests. The first game I tested was World of Tanks. In this game, we were very clearly CPU bottlenecked as the average frame rate was about the same for both high and low settings. On high settings, we actually got a better minimum frame rate, most likely due to the CPU offloading work onto the GPU. The CPU stayed nearly maxed out and probably would have been pegged at 100% at all times if the game were a little bit more optimized. And that statement goes for basically all of the games that were tested except for Rocket League and GTA V.
The next game we tested was Racket League at both high and low settings. At low settings, the game had a noticeable frame stutter that lasted as long as 2 seconds, making the game very frustrating to play. However, bumping settings to high smoothed out the low end with a much more playable 26 FPS minimum and very few frame drops. However, despite that, the CPU stayed pegged in the 90% range nearly all of the time. We also tested War Thunder both Air Forces and Ground Forces. In the air we saw a playable average, but it did sometimes stutter, however dropping the settings smoothed it out. In Ground Forces, the high settings caused massive stuttering as the CPU was likely inundated with draw calls and defects. However, dropping settings to low gave us a much smoother experience. As a side note, when this game came out I used to play it on a Core 2 Duo with an 8800 GTS. And with that hardware I was easily able to get a better gaming experience in this particular game. In CSGO at both high and low settings we had bad frame stutters, however in the low settings we did get a better average of 40 FPS. If you want this board to play CSGO I would really avoid it as even an old Core 2 system would likely get you a much higher frame rate. The last game we tested was Grand Theft Auto V. Usually I test this game in the in-game benchmark, however due to the CPU's apparent inability to render damn near anything, the frame rate really didn't reflect the true performance of this CPU. So I hopped onto the single player mode and had a go at it. And when I did, my eyes were greeted by quite the spectacle. It looked as though the game was rendered exclusively by Pablo Picasso himself. In the console version of this game, the texture pop is awful. But with this CPU and board, you're lucky if you get any textures at all. Or cars. Or buildings. 
or anything really. This game, although technically runs, is 100% broken on this system. Well, with that final disappointment, I can say with certainty that this is not a gaming board, or really consumer board at all. The only use I can see for it is possibly as a controller board for a compact piece of commercial or industrial equipment that needs the x86 architecture. In any other situation, buying something used or just $30 more would be a better option. For $30 more, you could get a new Athlon X4 with a motherboard or a Skylake Pentium with a motherboard. But this dejected piece of hardware is just not worth it. So that means there's only one thing to do with it.